Hello one, hello all. Welcome to this exclusive trend watching webinar about glass box brands. In an age of radical transparency, your internal culture is becoming your brand. Time to take action. My name is David Mattin. I'm Global Head of Trends and Insights here at Trend Watching. I will be your guide to the idea, to the world that is glass box brands over the next 25 minutes or so. Um, you know the drill by now, lots of you. Uh, you can reach out to me anytime you like at david at trendwatching.com. You can find me at Twitter on at dmattin. And if you'd like to tweet and discuss and criticize and co-create along with us on Twitter while you listen, while you listen please do so uh, using the hashtag glassboxbrands. Uh, so we've been in the lab here at Trendwatching thinking about our big trend watching quarterly theme. Uh, at the beginning of the year, we hit you with truthful consumerism. Uh, three months ago, we gave you the future of customer experience. Our third big theme is this idea, this trend that we want to put in front of you, glass box brands. And a couple of weeks ago, of course, we published the big report. So the first thing to say to all of you tuning in, and by the way, we have hundreds of people from all over the world tuning in, so thank you so much for that. Good evening, good morning, good night. If you've stayed up very late or you've got up very early, it's so appreciated. Thank you for joining us. But as I was saying, a couple of weeks ago, we set the big report live to the world, live to the public, live to you guys, our subscribers. So if you want the full fat experience of glass box brands if you want every innovation every statistic every insight um, then of course the thing to do if you haven't already is to download the full report go to trendwatching.com scroll down a bit scroll down that home page a bit and you will find <laughs> you will find the link to the full report there ready for you to download so dive in if you haven't done that already because i'm going to give you a quick overview in this webinar but i can't cover every single detail of course um, I want to walk you through the thinking that went on here at the trend watching office um, when that allowed us to come to arrive to identify really the trend glass box brands and you guys know our methodology you know it is entirely innovation focused we're looking out to the world of innovations we're fueled by this network of spotters sending us examples new products new services new campaigns that they see in their markets all the time and I'm head of the team really joining the dots between those innovations, trying to spot the new directions of travel, spot the new trends. Now, a few months ago, really a trickle throughout 2017, we saw a cluster of interesting innovations, almost not so much innovations, more incidents, more kind of events out there inside the consumer arena that set us pondering. The first was the steady rumble of scandals we've had in 2017 about what's going on inside Uber, about Uber's internal culture. You know, we had the, the, the news about the culture of sexism and bullying that went viral after a blog post, and we'll look a bit look cl more closely at that in a minute. We've had ongoing rumblings about how Uber treats um, its drivers, about driver welfare. Uh, maybe that's fueled the recent London decision to not renew Uber's license here in London. And then, of course, there was the time pictured on the screen in front of you now that Tra Travis shouted at his own Uber driver when that driver dared to raise the issue of driver pay. So you've had this steady rumble of stuff, uh, bad news essentially about Uber's internal culture going on through 2017. Then in April of uh, this year, we saw United drag a passenger down the aisle to remove him from a flight because they wanted to give his seat to a, to a, to a member of United staff. Um, and there was a smartphone video of that, and of course it went viral, we all saw it. Set us pondering, had this stuff going on inside Uber, then this very difficult story around United's culture when it comes to dealing with these sorts of issues and the way it trains its staff, and was that an appropriate response? Um, not all bad news, though. We also saw this amazing story about an HSBC CEO in Taiwan walking a gay employee down the aisle uh, because her father disapproved of her same-sex relationship. Um, and again, just a, an amazing insight into the internal culture of HSBC in Taiwan, how it values diversity, how it, how it values its employees, how it applies. Um, a human approach, really, to thinking about its people and their welfare and what's right. 
a cluster of three very interesting, as I say, not really innovations, but incidents, all powered by transparency, all revealing to us in a very interesting way facets of the internal culture of the organizations in question, but at the same time, all profoundly affecting uh, the view that millions of consumers take of the brand of that business, how they feel about that business. That just set us pondering what's going on here. It feels like something new is going on. And of course, as I say, that's how we at Trend Watching work. We're looking at the world of innovation in this structured way, looking at the consumer arena in this structured way, interrogating it for what is going on, what's next, what are the emerging signals we can discern. And, and our antennae were really twitching when we saw this cluster of examples and more. And they all led us, when you put all that together, to this trend glass box brands. They really led us to this statement. They got us thinking, that's what that slide is to show, and they really led us to this statement. A brand used to be a black box, now it's a glass box. Now that might seem an incredibly intangible statement right now. You might be asking yourself, how on earth have you gone from that cluster of events inside the consumer arena that you just showed me to this statement, a brand used to be a black box, now it's a glass box. So what I wanna do is unpack the thinking behind that, unpack that idea for you, because that really is the central idea behind glass box brands. Okay, so let's walk through that idea now, and really it starts here. It starts with the thought that back in the day, traditionally, a business was a black box. So for outsiders, it was very hard to see what was going on inside that box, inside that organization. The brand for that business was pretty much whatever the business leaders decided to paint on the outside of the box. That was the only thing that was visible to outsiders, to the consumers, to the customers outside. So the business leaders had a high degree of control over that. They could decide what they painted on the outside of the box. That was all that was visible to outsiders, to consumers, to customers. And, you know, people would come along, look at the box, see what was painted on it, and either they liked it or they didn't. Either they liked what they saw, they liked the way it made them feel, or they didn't. So in some ways, simpler times, okay? It was a much, it was, it was a more straightforward model of a business and how a business creates its brand and how consumers, outsiders, people outside the box, view and relate to that brand, okay? Today, in contrast, a business is a glass box. So it's very easy for outsiders to see what's going on in there. They can see right inside the box. They can see the work that's going on in there. They can see the people that are doing it. They can even see how the people who are doing that work feel about what they're doing. They can see everything and they can see right inside. Now you all intuitively know the reason for that massive shift from a black box, business as a black box, to a business as a glass box. The reason is radical transparency. We live in a radically transparent age, and that has empowered us in all kinds of new ways to see deep inside the organizations, deep inside the businesses that we engage with. Even those we don't engage with, we can see deep inside them. Now, what we're saying with the glass box brands trend is that that shift from a business as a black box to a business as a glass box amounts to a massive, profound, and very important shift in what it means to be a brand, okay? It's a big shift in what it means to be a brand. Um, and I wanna talk about why that is. So first of all, just take a step back. Think about what a brand is. And remember, we're talking about a brand here as distinct from a business. You know, we all know what a business is an operation, it's a set of capabilities, it's a set of people that, that does something. Okay, what is a brand? What is, they, what is a brand for a business? A brand really is a set of emotional and associational touch points that consumers have with that business. It's what consumers can see of that business and crucially what they feel about what they see. Okay, it's the emotional response in the end to the business. That really is the brand. Now, back in the day when a business was a black box, when an organization, any organization, including a business, was a black box, all that was visible 
was what was painted on the outside of the box. Okay, that's all consumers could see. Uh, that's all they could respond to. Those were the touch points. So they saw what they saw and they felt what they felt about it. And that was it. Either they liked what they saw or they didn't. Either they liked what they felt or they didn't. Now consider where we are when a business is a glass box, when outsiders, when consumers can see all the way into the box. Now what's visible is not just what's painted on the outside of the box, it's everything, okay? Every person, every process that's going on inside that business, every value that is embodied by what's going on. Consumers can see everything going on in there. And of course, as soon as they can see it, they're going to feel something about it. It's going to become part of the way they feel about this business that they're looking at. Um, and that crucially means that it's going to become a part of the brand. All the stuff they see going on in there, because it's gonna make them feel something, it's gonna become a part of the brand for that business. Okay, now there's a word for what consumers can see when they look deep inside a business and they see everything that's going on. We can sum it up essentially in one word. What they see is your culture. Or if you want to give yourself two words, your internal culture or your corporate culture. Of course, part of what we're saying with Glassbox Brands is that yes, back in the day you had an internal culture and it was just that, it was internal. Now there's really no such thing as internal culture anymore. Your culture is on public display because we live in a radically transparent world, because a business is now a glass box that people can see right inside, your culture is on public display, your culture is public property. And that leads us really to this big conclusion, okay, this is the, the big shift in the consumer arena that we're driving at with this idea, which is this, in 2017, your corporate culture, your internal culture, if you want to put it that way, is becoming a profoundly important part of your brand. And that's a big shift. That's a huge shift that's being brought about by a radically transparent world, okay? When you were a black box, people couldn't really see your internal culture, so it wasn't really a part of your brand. Now you're a glass box because of radical transparency. So as counterintuitive, intuitive as it seems, your internal culture, the stuff that's going on in there just between your people and your processes, that's becoming a massively important part of your public facing brand. Okay, that's the crucial idea. Corporate culture, internal culture is becoming a massively important part of your brand. Okay, now what is driving this shift? Again, as I said, if you wanna dive in more fully to the, the big forces driving this shift towards glass box brands that, that are causing internal culture to become such an important part of brand. If you want to dive into the big reasons, go and download the full report. There's lots more in there, but very, very quickly so that we can move on. You know, we've talked already about the big driver here, that the key significant primary driver of this shift is transparency. We live in a radically transparent world. Um, and it's connectivity that's driving that transparency, okay? It's a connected world where everyone has a smartphone, everyone's blogging, everyone's shooting videos, people are live streaming. That's what's driving the radical transparency that allows people to see deep inside your organization. So for example, I promise we come back to this, we know the culture of sexism and bullying inside Uber really was only fully exposed when this employee, Susan Fowler, wrote a blog post about it that went viral, that ended up being read by millions of people. That's just one tiny shard of how a connected world where people are empowered to share their thoughts, share their ideas, how that connected world creates radical transparency, turns businesses into glass boxes that everyone can see right inside. Um, of course, it wouldn't matter what people could see when they looked deep inside your business if they didn't really care what they saw. You know, if all they cared about was your end product and that was it, it doesn't matter what's going on in there because I don't care, then none of this would really be an issue. But we know, obviously, we know here at Trend Watching and you guys know full well, people do care. You know, we talk about this mega trend endlessly and I know a lot of you guys talk about it too. We are in the middle of an epic shift or an epic search on the part of millions of consumers for a more meaningful and more ethical and more sustainable consumerism, okay? And that means that when people look inside an organization, 
Um, they are looking to see that the values and the ethics um, that are being represented there align with their own, make them feel good about engaging with that business. Uh, we know that consumption in very affluent societies is not just about acquiring more and more and more stuff. Okay, we're so rich now, we don't really need that much more stuff. We're so affluent, we don't need that much more stuff in the way we used to. Consumption is becoming much more about telling a story of personal identity, telling a story to myself and to the world about who I am. So when I engage with a brand, I want to feel good about that brand. I want that brand to have values that align with my own, that tell me and tell the world, look, I'm a good person because I'm engaging with this brand. Um, so it's crucial then that the, the values that consumers see when they look inside that brand, inside that business, align with their own. They really do care about that. I mean, if you want just one glimpse of, of the shift towards consumption as a story of personal identity, just go to Instagram, search hashtag clean eating, and you will see you know, 33 million posts, people displaying their, their consumption fueled story of personal identity, telling the world who they want to be. You know, that's just one tiny fragment of this epic trend towards consumption as a story of personal identity. Another big driver pushing this forward after uh, transparency and the search for a more ethical consumer, consumerism, automation and inequality. Okay, we're very accustomed to the idea that consumers care deeply about certain kinds of workers. So workers in developing economies who are vulnerable, you know, think coffee growers or textile workers in India. Um, the global economy now is being shaken um, by headwinds, uh, even in affluent societies, that are giving people new cause to broaden the scope of their ethical concern, okay, to care even about extremely affluent workers in affluent societies. Because we know that uh, automation is putting uh, millions of jobs at risk. We know that there's rising inequality in many affluent societies. So people's locus of ethical concern is growing. Okay, they care deeply now about how brands are treating white collar workers in, in affluent societies who are managers. Um, and that's driving this trend too. So when people see inside organizations like Uber, or they see inside organizations like Amazon, they care about how those companies are treating their own people, even if those people are pretty affluent by global standards. That's driving this trend forward too. Of course, this model is just that. It's a working model. Um, the idea that we've shifted from a business as a black box to a business as a glass box is a working model. I mean, back in the day, um, of course, a business wasn't perfectly a black box. Of course, information still got out. You know, there was still traditional journalism. People still got to discover things that were going on inside businesses, and sometimes they didn't like it. And in 2017, today, of course, a business is not perfectly a, a glass box. People can't see everything that's going on in there. Uh, there are plenty of things that remain hidden and plenty of things that are just mundane that no one particularly cares about, no one really wants to know about. It's a working model, but nevertheless, um, it's a model that's describing a real shift, a reality that is palpably real. And really what this model should do is provoke some deep thinking on your part. What does this shift from the black box to the glass box mean for us? What does it mean for us now that our internal culture is becoming a profoundly important part of our brand? Our brand isn't just the shiny marketing that we stick out on the outside of our box anymore. Our brand is, is also what is going on deep inside our organization. The people, the way they're working, the values, the ethics, the processes. People, consumers out there can see all of that now. And that means that is part of our brand too. What does that mean for us? So really what I'd love to do in the second half of, that, of this webinar is focus on that question, what should you do? And again, if you're familiar with trend watching, and I know lots and lots of you out there are, this is a profoundly important part of what we do here at Trend Watching. Yes, we identify the trends, but then we're always super keen to ask, what does this mean for your business? What does this mean for you as a founder, as a marketer, 
as a CEO, as the brand strategy person, you know, what should you do about it? So that's one of the that's what I want to look at right now. And essentially, I can boil the answer down to one simple thought. In a world uh, of glass box brands, in a world where your internal culture is now a deeply important part of your brand, um, what you should do is make positive changes to your internal culture and then tell the world about them, okay? So it, as simple as that, make positive, meaningful changes to your internal culture and then tell the world about them. And the reason that that is the only really meaningful answer to the rise of glass box brands is pretty simple. I mean, a couple of things, look, consumers out there know that there's no such thing as a perfect internal culture. You know, there's just no such thing. And, con and customers, consumers out there are, of course, smart enough to know that. They, they won't expect your internal culture to be perfect. But what they will expect is that whoever you are, whether you're a startup or whether you're a massive legacy organization, kind of um, weighed down by some legacy processes and legacy thinking, uh, that you are moving in the right direction, that you are making meaningful changes to to, to just make that internal culture better, to, to make progress, to move in the right direction. If you're doing that, um, then that is the best you can do. That will be enough. That will satisfy consumers that they can feel good about you. Uh, of course, that's kind of a scary thought because we know that making organizational change is hard. It is hard to change your internal culture. Um, so that's the kind of scary part of this, but don't forget that this is, yes, it's scary. It's scary that people are going to be, the thought that people can now see deep inside your organization, can see your internal culture, and that your internal culture and aspects of it that you're even not happy with are now part of your brand. Yes, that's a scary thought, but the huge opportunity here, the huge opportunity is that internal culture can now become a hugely valuable marketing asset to you in all kinds of new and interesting ways. Because if you can make meaningful positive change to your internal culture, or you can identify those kinds of changes that you're already making, because that's often the case. Um, if you can do that, and then you can tell compelling stories about them, and that, that part is crucial too. You know, if people are gonna find out about this, you have to tell compelling stories about the changes you're making. But if you can do that, those stories can become a hugely valuable marketing asset. Perhaps your most powerful story, your most powerful brand story in 2018. Um, so I want to look at some examples of the way brands and businesses are themselves approaching that problem. Okay, I want to look at some examples of how brands and businesses are themselves making powerful, meaningful changes to their internal culture and then turning those changes into compelling stories that become a hugely powerful marketing asset for them, okay? Um, I've divided these examples into three categories, people, processes, and values. So let's start with people because, of course, if you want to make powerful change to your internal culture, you know, doing something great for your people, doing something that means you treat your people better or that allows your people to flourish or that gives your people new opportunities is a great place to start. Your people are the, are the, are the living embodiment of your internal culture. They're the people who live it every day. And they're the people who in the end are going to be telling the world about it. So if you can do something great for your people, that's a very powerful change. Um, so let's look at a few examples of that. Start with a very, very simple one. This is IKEA. It's actually IKEA in India. And they did something pretty straightforward. And we've seen multiple examples of this across 2017. But this is the one I just wanted to put in front of you today. They did something very straightforward. They just said, if you become a new parent while you're a member of staff here at IKEA India, then you get six months paid parental leave. It doesn't matter what the, the legal requirements are. It doesn't matter what the statutory requirements are. We just believe it's the right thing to do to give new parents six months paid parental leave. So for all staff of IKEA in India, that's what we're going to do. And they also um, 
They also added in that they're going to build some daycare centers and help train employees to, to better manage their career while having a family and all of that. Uh, so just a great example, very straightforward example of making a positive, meaningful change to internal culture that then becomes a very powerful story, okay? That then becomes a marketing asset that speaks volumes about um, how IKEA treats its people and how it is building a more ethical internal culture, how it's turning into a more ethical organization. And that that story then becomes a powerful part of the IKEA brand in India. It allows people to feel differently about IKEA. It allows people to feel good, to feel better about engaging with them, to know that their values align with their own. Okay, it becomes a, a powerful part of the brand. Um, Another example I love that I wanted to put in front, in front of you today, this is Yahoo doing something really interesting. Um, they introduced a scheme, this was in May 2017, to utilize the strengths of employees diagnosed with um, neurological differences. And I mean here things like autism, ADHD, dyslexia, obsessive compulsive disorder. So they, they established at Yahoo a neurodiversity employee resource group. And really that's a long title, but it was just a, a working group to say, how can we do more for these employees and how can we leverage the unique skills and talents that they can bring to us at Yahoo? Because you know we know they have those unique skills and talents. We know we can we can uh, all benefit from those as an organization, but also because it's the right thing to do to provide an environment where those neurodiverse employees can flourish. So again, a pretty straightforward, pretty clear example of making a meaningful, positive change for your people inside your organization. But again, think about how that story of internal change becomes a powerful marketing asset, becomes a part of the brand that is Yahoo changes how consumers, how customers will feel about engaging with that brand because they can now see that story and that story will make them feel something. And obviously you would think it will make them feel good. It will make them feel better about this organization. Yes, it's the right thing to do, but it also becomes a massively powerful part of the brand. Um, and last example here, this is an intriguing one. I wanted to put this on your radar because it comes at this from a different angle. How about incentivizing um, positive change for your employees? So if you don't want to just wholesale make a change that affects them, how about incentivizing them, rewarding them, partnering with your staff, with your people to encourage them to do the right thing for themselves? So this is the Indian workplace health provider, True Worth Wellness. What they did is they found a way essentially to incentivize healthy behavior on the part of their employees. So if you're an employee and you follow, you, you devise a health plan and you stick to that health plan and you can track it with wearable devices and log it on a platform and all of this kind of stuff. If you stick to your own personal health goals, you are then rewarded um, with points that can be exchanged for health products or more time off or financial rewards. So a great example of an employer incentivizing its own people to do the right thing for themselves. Okay, and that's a great angle to come at this from. But again, just a great example of making meaningful, positive change for your own people that becomes then a powerful brand story that will change the way people feel about you as an organization. So I would love you guys to take a moment there and think how can you inside your organization make meaningful, positive change for your own people and then turn that change into a compelling story that you tell the outside world that will change the way your consumers, maybe change the way millions of people out there feel about you as a brand because what it will show them is that you have values that align with theirs, that you are an ethical organization, that you care about people so they can feel good about engaging with you. As I say, we saw countless examples on the parental leave front, like Spotify did a very interesting, very effective campaign about positive changes it made to its own parental leave policy that helped change the way people feel about Spotify. How could you do the same thing inside your organization, make a change or identify a positive change that's already going on for people and tell the world about it, turn it into a compelling story. Another angle to come at all of this is not people, but processes. This slide actually still says people, that's a mistake, it should, should say processes. 
Um, yes, it's great to do stuff for your people. Your people are the living embodiment of your culture. Um, but you can also think about your internal processes, about the ways that you work, the methods that you use, the tools, the equipment that you use. How can you make positive changes on that front and tell the world about those? And I just want to show you some examples of that. This is an interesting one. This is Carrefour, the big European supermarket chain operating, in this case, in Poland. What they did is they made new shirts for their staff, the staff who work on the tills. And these shirts have a special technology and essentially a special type of um, copper compound that attracts and neutralizes the germs, the viruses, the bacteria that cause like flu and cold illnesses. So if you work on a till, that's a massive problem. You're often exposed to these kinds of germs. You catch more colds than you should. Um, this is a shirt that helps deal with that problem. So a simple change to a internal process, in this case revolving around equipment, um, that helps the organization get better, that helps it be a healthier, more balanced workplace for people. And that again, turns into a very compelling marketing story. We are an innovative company. We care about our people. We turn our own innovation on ourselves to help create a better workplace. Changes the way consumers will feel about the Carrefour brands, a very powerful example. This is Quartet Communications. Um, there's echoes in this example of the example from True Worth Wellness about incentivizing good behavior. Because what they did is made a simple change to one of their processes, essentially one of their working rules to incentivize a more healthy, more balanced workplace. And that was this, very simply, they started to pay bonuses to employees who work less overtime. So not a bonus if you work longer hours, but a bonus if you work fewer hours, if you work less overtime. And they did that because they said, we want to incentivize a healthy working culture, a healthy balanced lifestyle for our people because we believe that is the right thing to do. So again, a, a change that's totally internal, that has no direct impact on the end consumer, on the end customer, but will change the way the end customer feels about this organization. So it will become a part of the brand for this organization. You know, essentially part of the brand will be, we care about people, we care about the way we work. And of course, that's a great brand attribute to have. Um, and last, this is a super intriguing one that I just wanted to put on your radar. It's an example of how just, make it, just making a simple change um, in, in a way you work can have sort of really amazing <laughs> consequences for the way you work and also the way you, you are perceived. So this is Ariana Huffington. Of course, you guys all know her. And she recently founded Thrive Global, which is a platform for wellness, promoting work-life balance. Um, she recently, in August 2017, revealed something very interesting about the way Thrive Global handle email inside their organization. Like we all know the problem of, of vacation email backlog. You know, you go away, you set an out of office, you come back from your one week or two week vacation to hundreds and hundreds of emails, a massive email backlog for you to work through. Ariana Huffington said, we do something slightly different at Thrive Global, and that is we have an email management tool that, yes, sends the out of office back, you know, this person is not in the office, please email someone else, um, or email this person upon their return, which is this date. And then what it does is it deletes the, in, the inbound email. It deletes the original email. And of course, it tells the sender it's going to do that. This email that you sent is going to be deleted. And that means that the person coming back from vacation does not have this huge email backlog. Either the sender of the email will have found someone else inside the organization to handle their problem, or they'll have solved it themselves, or if it's super important, there's nothing else they can do, they'll email again when the person gets back. So you don't come back to hundreds and hundreds of emails in a queue waiting for you to deal with, which Ariana Huffington rightly says can kind of ruin your holiday because either you're just kind of dreading getting back and that kind of ruins your whole holiday anyway or what usually happens as you guys full well know is you tend to go into your emails on holiday to try and deal with emails as they're coming in and then you're not really totally on holiday at all so this simple tool this simple change to processes 
is, um, is a powerful, meaningful, positive change to the internal culture. But Ariana Huffington is very smart, <laughs> and she also, in this interview, turned it into an extremely compelling, extremely interesting, essentially marketing story, an extremely interesting facet of the brand for Thrive Global, which of course for them is, we, you know, we walk the talk, we, we live the way we talk about work-life balance. Inside our organization, we are building a balanced, healthy working culture. And that became, that is a hugely important part of their brand. So again, how can you guys, that's just three examples there. There's, there's more in the full report if you download it. How can you make a meaningful, positive change to your internal processes, to the ways you work, the tools you use, the methods you use, um, that you can then turn into a compelling story to share with the outside world that will become a part of your brand that could be your most interesting campaign in 2018. Um, final examples category I want to share with you is values. But yes, making positive changes for your people is, is great. Yes, making positive changes to your processes is great. But this is all really leading to the big one, which is make positive changes to your internal values, okay? Um, show the world who you are and what you believe in. Make a positive change that speaks volumes about who you are as an organization and what your core beliefs are. And I just wanna show you some examples of that. Um, here's an interesting one to start with, and this is an interesting one because it shows just how context specific these, these uh, stories of meaningful positive change can be. So this is Time Hotels management in Dubai. Um, what they did in April 2017 is they said, we're going to make a radical internal change. We're going to open a new hotel called the Asthma Hotel. And this hotel is all going to be about empowerment of our female staff. So the, the manager of this hotel is going to be a woman. Um, the senior staff, there will be women, and there'll be courses at this hotel to help our female staff progress through the ranks and become senior leaders. That's a powerful, positive, meaningful change to our internal culture that speaks volumes about our values, that tells the world what we believe. We believe in gender equality. Um, now, of course, if this was a hotel in America, North America, or you know, Europe, or many other places around the world, that would hardly be a super compelling story. You know, one of our hotels is going to be led by a female member of staff. You'd have people saying, I hope half of your hotels are led by female members of staff if you're truly balanced, okay? But this is Dubai, it's a more traditional society. In that context, in this location, in this market, that is a powerful, meaningful, radical almost um, change, shift in the internal culture that, as, as I say, and the crucial thing here is becomes a part of the brand, becomes a compelling brand story. Um, it doesn't, you don't have to have an absolute fortune at your disposal to make a meaningful change that speaks volumes about your values as an organization. But if you do, it can help and there's nothing stopping you spending it. So this is Facebook. Um, in July 2017, they submitted plans to construct what they're calling the Willow Campus, which is essentially a, an entire neighborhood um, of homes and shops and services in Menlo Park around their offices. This is really targeting the housing crisis that's going on in Silicon Valley because house prices in Silicon Valley have risen so high now. There's, you know, we know, of course, that the tech companies and all their employees are, including Facebook, are pricing people out of the market in Silicon Valley. Um, and this really is, a, is an attempt to address that problem. So this is gonna be 1,500 new homes available, not just for Facebook staff to rent or purchase, but for anyone um, in the community to rent or purchase. Facebook doing it, yes, because they wanna do something good for their staff, but also because of, and for the broader community, because it's what they believe. They want to show where their values are. You know, we know we are contributing to this housing crisis. We want to take steps to help ameliorate it. Um, of course, for many organizations, this is way out of reach. This is gonna cost hundreds of millions, billions of dollars. Um, but again, a massively powerful, meaningful change that becomes a hugely powerful part of the Facebook brand. Okay, the Facebook brand is facing all kinds of problems at the moment. There are all kinds of questions about other aspects of, it, of its internal culture. 
Is it dealing with the fake news question well enough? Does it care enough about the fake news question? Okay, um, those are in parts of its internal culture that are part of its brand too, that are causing problems for Facebook. Here's a positive story of meaningful change to the internal culture that's good, that's progressive, that also becomes a part of the brand that helps people feel a little differently about the Facebook brand. So again, yes, it's the right thing to do, but also a very compelling brand story for the end consumer. Um, and I just wanted to finish on this example just to say, you know, how radical can you be when you make these changes that speak volumes about your values? How about this radical? Um, this is a metro rail company in India. Um, they've announced in May 2017 that they are going to begin to employ for the first time transgender women. So transgender women in India, in this community, face a lot of prejudice, face a lot of difficulties, a lot of so social isolation. This metro rail company is saying, you know, we want to stand up for what is right. We believe this passionately as an organization. We believe in equality for these people. We believe in human dignity for these people. We're going to start employing them. They've employed 23 um, to begin with. They're gonna work behind ticket counters. They're gonna work in housekeeping teams and customer service. Um, and they're going to receive training as well when it comes to how to deal with consumers, how to deal with, how to deal with difficult customers. Um, and how to improve their confidence when it comes to dealing with members of the public. So a hugely radical change in a society as traditional as uh, Indian society can be to really go out on a limb and say, we know these people are the victims of prejudice. We believe that is wrong. We believe in equality and human dignity for these people. And that's, where, and that's why we're making this change. We're going to put our money where our mouth is on that front. Um, that becomes a massive, I mean, I didn't have to tell you this, it's intuitively obvious, a massively compelling story about this brand. It becomes a part of the brand. It will change the way consumers feel about this organization. Let's be honest, for some consumers, it will change the way they feel about the organization for the worse. They will not agree with this. So this brand is really going out this business is really going out on a limb. It's being pretty daring, it's being pretty bold. And of course, for many others, it will positively change the way they feel about the brand. They'll say, yes, these values align with mine. I agree with this change. I believe this organization is doing the right thing. I can feel good about engaging with this organization. Okay, and that's what this idea, Glassbox Brands, is all about. So how can you make a positive change to your internal culture that speaks volumes about who you are, what you believe, what your values are. How can you do that? And then turn that change into a compelling story, a written story, a video story, a live stream story, a blogged story, whatever it is, a compelling story that will impact on consumers, that will change the way they feel about you. Um, okay, that wraps up. Uh, my very quick run through of the trend that is glass box brands and I hope I've given you some some provocation some food for thought as I say please do if you're intrigued if you haven't already go download the full report there's more in there there's more examples you'll have more time to think about the drivers to think about the deep nature of this trend so download and read share with your teams if you're so inclined um, there's more content to come, so keep, if you have already downloaded the report, keep coming back to trendwatching.com, check the download, download page, because we'll be adding more content, innovator interviews. You can also check me out on LinkedIn. I'll be continuing to write about Glassbox brands on LinkedIn too. I've already written an article that some of you read there, um, but I'll be continuing to write about this trend um, as it's relevant, as we see new news stories that relate to it. For you premium clients out there, of course, you can continue to track this trend and the innovations that we're spotting inside the database. Um, you can see how this trend relates to our um, 16 mega trends, those deep, big forces moving through the consumer arena that we talk to you, our clients, about all the time. As I say, you can dive into the database track some of the trends that relate to this glass box brands trend, see the innovations as they're rolling in. And of course, you know if you're a premium client that we're constantly updating this database, you're gonna see you know, multiple innovations all the time that relate to this trend and it will really inspire you and provoke some thinking. Um, 
I do have a few questions. You can always reach out to me, David, at trendwatching.com if you didn't get the chance to ask a question. But let me just see if there's any I can answer now because that's always a bit of fun. Um, so I have one question here. Will brands become, this is from Jonathan, will brands become more ethical now? I mean, I think it's probably wishful thinking to, to believe that every brand will immediately become more ethical because of this trend. But I do think that in an age of radical transparency, when we know that consumers can see deep inside every organization, deep inside a business, they can see what's going on in there. And of course, they will then feel something about that, that will become part of the brand. Um, internal culture is going to become important to organizations in new and significant ways. And yes, we will see um, organizations, businesses forced or determined, I guess, to become more ethical to prove to consumers that their values align with theirs okay so it's not just about the end product anymore it's also about who we are inside this business um, and you can you know perhaps see the beginnings of that with uber i mean yes they've had all these problems but they've had to respond to them in a pretty epic way you know in the end they the investors forced the founder of the company the driving force behind the company to be fired, not because he wasn't performing in terms of results, not because the business wasn't going great guns, you know, not because rides were down or revenue was down, but because it was felt he built an unethical internal culture, okay? They were forced to respond to that because so many millions of consumers were seeing that culture and did not like what they saw. So I think, yes, we're going to move in that direction. Uh, let's see if there's any other uh, questions I can answer. So the great one here is this trend only for B to C organisations. Does it also affect B to B organisations? I mean, I think the, the, the quick answer is yes. It also affects B to B organisations because if you're a business to business organisation, you know your your customer is a business, but the decision maker, the person in the end you're dealing with, you're trying to sell to, is a human being. Um, and if they can see deep inside your organization and they don't like what they see and they feel your internal culture is unethical or unsustainable or it just kind of doesn't feel good to them, then they're not really going to want to engage with you. They're not gonna, gonna feel great about engaging with you. So just as transparency is affecting B2C organizations, transparency is making B2B organizations glass boxes too and their customers are human beings. They will see what deep inside the organization. If they don't like what they see, that's going to affect their impression of you. It's going to affect their, their feeling about your brand, and they're not going to want to engage as much as they, as they might have done. So yes, I think this is powerful for B2B as well. Um, can this trend, this is from Camilla, can this trend translate to startups and small and medium-sized enterprises? I mean, 100%, I think this is a very powerful trend for startups and SMEs. Uh, to a certain extent, they are at an advantage when it comes to internal culture. And this is something we've written about uh, quite a few times here at Trend Watching. If you want to really dive into our archive, you can go right back to a trend we wrote years ago called Clean Slate Brands. Um, and in that trend, we talked about how startups are at an advantage when it comes to what's to, to internal culture essentially, because they're building that internal culture from the ground up. They're building it from scratch. So if you're a huge legacy organization with hundreds of thousands of employees in a global footprint, the values you are founded on are likely to be decades old and kind of outdated. And for many people, uh, not really where their heart is anymore. Um, and that's difficult. That's a huge challenge for legacy organizations. Of course, as I've said, they can address that challenge best by just moving in the right direction, making meaningful positive change. If you're a startup, you're at a huge advantage because you can build your internal culture from scratch. You don't have all that legacy stuff, all those legacy processes, legacy values. So a massive competitive edge for you is to say, look deep inside our internal culture. It's great, it's awesome, it's totally 2017, it totally aligns with your values. There's none of that legacy baggage. Um, and that's a massive benefit we bring to you as a consumer. You can feel great about engaging with us in a way that you can't with our old legacy incumbent competitor because you know their values are still like pretty 1970s, their ethics are pretty 1970s, they've got massive global footprint and that causes a lot of unsustainability. Um, so yeah, a really powerful one to think about if you're a startup. Just a few final thoughts to leave you on. 
you might be thinking, especially if you're inside a massive organization, but there's nothing I can do about this. You know, I'm not in control of my internal culture. I can't just make a massive change to the internal culture and then tell the outside world about it. You know, I don't have that power inside of my organization. Okay, that might be true, but don't let yourself off the hook. You still can take powerful action on this trend. And that powerful action can be to build a movement inside your organization. Share the idea, share the briefing, share the report, make a tiny change just to the way you work and tell your colleagues about it. Start a movement inside your organization to get glass box brands on the radar of your senior people, to get it being discussed and to, to, to ignite a discussion about how your organization should respond. That should be your step one. And a really powerful way to think about how to apply this trend is to just tell yourself every department is the marketing department. Every team, every person should be empowered to tell their stories of how they're working, what they're doing, the problems they're facing, how they're feeling about it, and share those stories with the outside world, okay? Because those stories of internal change, of meaningful positive change inside your organization will be most compelling when they are told by the people who are making those changes. So don't think about it as though some people are making the changes and the marketing department will then come along and hover over them and write about those changes or share the story of the world. Empower every department to be the marketing department. Empower every department to tell its own stories. You will get much more powerful, much more compelling stories that way. And just remember that this in the end is a deeply empowering trend. Like, yes, it's a scary thought that people can see deep inside your organization and they might not like what they see. Uh, transparency is scary in that way. It amplifies your faults. It amplifies what's negative about your internal culture, it exposes that to millions of people. It also amplifies, and this is what's easy to forget, it amplifies what's great about your internal culture. It amplifies what you're doing right. It amplifies your epic wins. And you should be deeply empowered by that thought. If you can go away today and make one meaningful positive change, make the beginnings of one meaningful positive change to your internal culture, and you can start to tell a compelling story about that, it could be your most powerful marketing campaign in 2018 because it would speak to consumers on a deep level about who you are, what you believe, your values. And we know that consumers care ever more about all of that. Um, okay, it's been such fun talking to you. Thanks so much for listening to this quick run through. Not so quick, but quick enough, I hope, of Glassbox brands. I'm going to get back to work on the big trend report that... Um, me and my team are working on that we will be putting in front of clients in November 2018, rounding up um, what we see as the big trends for 2018. So back to work for me. Thank you so much for listening. Please do get going on this trend. It's a super exciting one, very powerful for you and your organization if you can do it right. But for now, I will sign off. So thank you so much for listening and goodbye.